Yeah, yeah I, mean, I got thrown off because um, I guess the way I approached this midterm, I was focused on studying um, single object uh, force problems and multiple object force problems. And so I, when I when I saw this problem, I, I was a little bit thrown off. And so, yeah, I would just so, like to go over it. So this is, um, I guess, in a big part, it's a Newton's third law question because uh, that's really the biggest thing that I was expecting people to get. So let me do it this way. I'm going to do this split screen thing where the left hand side will be my questions and I'm going to use the space on the right as my blackboard, uh, kind of more so than usual. Um, so uh, the, so I'll, I'll just briefly work through. I think I can do this one in 10, 20 minutes. Um, so it says, uh, cannon, fires, ball, magnet, gunpowder. All these details don't matter, by the way. <laughs> Rapid combustion, none of this matters. <laughs> this picture pushes the cannon, none of this matters. Okay. Accelerating it through the length of the cannon L. Okay. That part matters. That's one of the parameters that I will likely be using. Um, and uh, module velocity. Okay. That matters. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to move the drawing later, but that's fine. So when the cannons are here, or cannon ball is here, it will be moving at some speed of V naught. Okay. Um, so part A says describe the forces on the free body diagrams for the cannon ball and the cannon while the cannon ball is being fired. So let me draw the simplest possible free body diagram that you could draw. So the simplest possible free body diagrams for this would be, hmm, come to think of it, I'm not sure why this question is in the single object section of the thing. Um, I think it's fine because uh, I think some of it was slightly unintentional. In any case, free body diagrams. So I have free body diagram of the cannon, that's one body, and free body diagram of the ball, cannon ball, uh, that's a second body. So uh, there's at least one force. There's the force that has accelerated the cannonball up to this point. So let me draw that. This would be a um, force of, I don't know, um, force of cannon. Then um, from Newton's third law, there must be, with this one force that requires one other force. The, the reaction force pair. So I need to have the reaction force pair on the cannon, that, or the object that's exerting this force. And that would be same in magnitude as the other force I labeled as F cannon. These two forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And if this is, these are the only forces you drew, then that's fine. Uh, while the cannonball is being fired, this is the most significant forces and you'll be good. Um, if you somehow, for some reason, drew additional forces like gravity and normal force, as long as you drew them in such a way that it looks like they will cancel each other out, that's fine too. These forces don't do anything interesting in this problem, but it's fine to uh, indicate them as well. But in terms of the simplest uh, free body diagram, this would be it. just two forces, reaction, reaction, force pairs. It's a Newton's third law question. And uh, for the answer, you would have to describe it. because um, So I do want people to attach image of something like this in your work, but um, because this uh, entry doesn't allow you to attach anything, uh, you'll have to just describe it in words like uh, so um, on the free body diagram of the cannon ball there is one force um, yeah at least one there's one force that is accelerating the cannon ball forward um, the ac reaction force to this action force is on the the free body diagram of the cannon. That's it. Um, so let me scroll down to the remainder. Of the, and the remainder of the question is more of a kinematics. And this, uh, um, you might see something similar to this setup when we are doing uh, energy and momentum, because um, this is the kind of the setup that later on we will actually handle it by using conservation of momentum. 
Um, so it says, find an expression for the average acceleration of the cannonball as it's being fired out of the cannon in terms of the given parameters above. Yeah, so that's the kinematics portion of it. So uh, you are given, uh, I should have drawn this from the start so that it's not in the part where it's being moved away. So uh, imagine having a cannon and a ball that starts from here and it's going to um, be pushed out here, V not. And um, I think given that I have the velocity, it would be nice if I had um, if I had some duration of time delta t. That would be nice because if I did, I could say acceleration is the change of velocity or just v naught minus zero divided by duration of time. Now you don't have that. This is not given in the problem itself. What you are given is the length of the cannon, and this is the place where you kind of have to. Having familiarity with uh, kinematics equations helps because uh, as you are going through that in your head, hopefully one of the expressions that you'll remember is the V squared formula. That V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus uh, two times acceleration times delta X. And this is technically a dot product. So they, if they are in opposite directions, there will be a minus sign in the product. So, so in this expression, once you remember it, then you see acceleration and you can solve for the acceleration here, um, use, uh, taking that as the average acceleration. And I guess, uh, um, technically speaking, this is kind of a more position average than time average, but we're not being picky here right now. So assuming acceleration is constant, uh, the acceleration would be given by, okay, final velocity, we not, initial velocity zero, and I'll have to divide by two times the delta x or L. So average acceleration would be my V final, which is V naught squared divided by two L. So that's it. Um, so my average acceleration is V naught squared squared over uh, 2L. Um, by the way, all this is graded manually. So if you put it like this, even though your calculator will think this means this, uh, most human beings interpret it the other way. So if uh, this is what you've written without the parentheses, I will probably take that as being correct, even though calculators usually won't. Um, so uh, see what is the average force on the cannonball. So this uh, in symbolic terms is uh, actually super simple because uh, your free body diagram is super simple. So your um, net, your, uh, so acceleration will give you the net force. And because you really have only one force, your net force is this force. So the average force on the cannonball is F net uh, mass times acceleration. And I think the parameters given here are basically so that you can work out a numerical answer. Um, that makes it easier for grading. <laughs> but in symbolic terms, it would be uh, mass times of V naught squared over 2L. Uh, what is the duration of firing? Um, yeah, this might take a little bit of time. Um, there's a couple different ways you can go. I think you, uh, let me show you the shortest uh, algebraic way you can do this, uh, which is to exploit this um, kind of two different ways we describe average speed. So there's the definition of average speed, which is the change of position or uh, I guess displacement, total displacement divided by duration of time. You can describe average speed that way. Or uh, for situation like this, where you are dealing with a constant uh, acceleration, you can actually say average speed is um, given by this special formula that your textbook actually derives. Uh, or I don't remember if they drive it. If they don't drive it, they at least give it to you, which is your initial velocity plus final velocity, not delta F, divided by two. Yeah, you can kind of see it more easily if you see the, the velocity as a function of time uh, chart. Then as long as your velocity is changing in a straight line, um, this is like the uh, uh, taking the area 
under the curve and dividing it by time. Uh, so, so using this relationship, you can actually do this pretty quickly because everything on the left hand side, you know, everything on the right hand side, you know, except for delta t. So you can solve for delta t, duration of time, as uh, delta, so delta t moves over, this moves over, so it'll be delta x times 2 divided by the, um, the sum of the initial and final velocity, which would be just this force. So that would be our duration of time. Plug in the numbers from above, and that will be your duration of time. Uh, delta t is equal to uh, delta l, so that will be delta x, that will be l times 2 divided by 3 naught. Um, and, and there are other ways to do it. Um, and I think I'm beginning to remember why I put this question in this group, because it's more kinematics question than force question. So even though it involves uh, two objects and interacting forces, it belongs more here than in the next one. Um, so yeah, and this, this is the part that it'll eventually tie into conservation of momentum in uh, next week. Uh, and uh, recall backwards how massive it should be. So um, <laughs> I guess uh, this is one of those questions. If you remember conservation, if you know conservation of momentum, you can answer super quickly. Um, if you don't, then um, I mean. So let me just say the answer. Um, so you the velocity of the cannon. Uh, based on the conservation of momentum, the speed of it, or rather, will be the ratio of the masses. Um, so the uh, mass of the cannonball divided by mass of the cannon uh, times the, the v naught, the speed of the cannonball as it's exiting. So this is going to be the speed of the cannon. So uh, in this question, they are basically giving you this quantity. They tell you how they want to limit it, and they are asking for this quantity here. So, um, so <laughs> now having done the question using this idea that we haven't yet introduced, so therefore I'm not technically allowed to use it. Um, but you know, I guess if the students use it, it's fine um, <laughs> to, to justify how. Um, this part is a reasonable question to ask. Let me just sketch out a different way you could have gotten at this same answer. Um, you get to it through Newton's, uh, Newton's third and second law. So Newton's third law already gave you this, the, that these two forces are equal. And Newton's second law will now give you the, um, now give you the, um, the, the next piece you need, which is the difference in the acceleration. So here, um, this force was the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the ball. And Newton's second law applies to cannon just singly. So this force, the same force as that, will be the mass of the cannon times the acceleration of the cannon. And since these two quantities are equal, we can kind of see how the acceleration of the cannon relates to the acceleration of the ball. There's a kind of proportional relationship or inverse proportional based on their masses. And the kind of the steps I'm skipping over now is the, the more kinematics argument to of where starting with the relationship of accelerations, you reach at this relationship between the the, velo the velocity of the ball, the final velocity of the ball, and the final velocity of the cannon. Um, and I think you can get to it fairly easily using the V squared relationship, can you? No. Um, I don't know if you can. Um, hmm. Sorry, this square is worrying me. Let me just think about it for a bit. Hmm. All right, let me just think about it. Uh, oh, um, I see. Their distance L is different, I think. Um, so what you do get at is um, not using this. You can't use this to get at the relationships in E. Um, you do instead, you, so because how far the 
ball moves is different from how far the cannon will move. What they do share commonly is the duration of time. So instead of this relationship, you would use the change in velocity is the acceleration times the duration of time. And you have the relationship of accelerations here. And you can say that for however long the cannon is pushing, the cannonball is pushing back. So you would use this being the same to basically transfer whatever relationship there is in acceleration to the change in velocity. So, so yeah, that's uh, this question. And it, uh, um, if you found it easy, suspiciously easy, then uh, it, 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 this is one of the easier questions. It's potentially conceptually harder because of this uh, action reaction force part. Um, but I guess if you somehow miss that, then you just miss out on part A. So, and a portion of part A. So that's maybe not a big, biggest to do. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, Happy to cover it. <laughs> um, and I.